Reparations. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Reparations. When do we want it? Now. 40 acres? Annual. 40 acres? Annual. 40 acres? Annual. 40 acres? Annual. 40 acres. Annual. They stole us. That's right. No, they, they stole us. They stole us. They sold us. They sold us. They owe us. They owe us. That's right. Come on, Deborah Gregory, give her a big hand. As the state of New Jersey officially celebrates Juneteenth as a state holiday, there are still schools that are in session. There are still people working. We have work to do. We need this day to be a day of commemoration, reflection, and remembrance. The harm must be repaired and that is through reparations. Every other group of people who have been harmed by the United States and even in some instances other countries have been able to get some type of reparations. It is time for us, people of color, black people, whose descendants came here on slave ships in 1619, who helped build this country to get reparations. And we can't even say the word reparations without people getting upset. But we have to say reparations. 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 Say the word reparations. And reparations win now. The next speaker is Zaid Muhammad from Newark Communities for Accountable Policing. Give him a big hand. Can y'all hear me? Yes. All power to the people. All power to the people. All power to the people. Say the word. Yo, funky as hell. Say the word. 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 I am so glad that my little sister Alfreda Coachman Daniels opened with the memory of the martyrs of the Emmanuel 9 massacre, right? Because that is an indication of how serious these times that we are living in. In our tradition, we start with our ancestors. Last year, I talked about some of the feminist warrior ancestors of reparations. I wanted to lift up for a quick moment of a name you may not know. And that's the name of a brave black woman who took us into the 20th century with reparations. Her name was Callie House. And while most of us look at the question of police brutality with, I'm sorry, political prisoners, with Marcus Garvey being our first political prisoner, you should know that the question of reparations it's always been such a discomforting, important question that the federal government as we knew it in the early 19-teens criminalized Cali House and she went to prison in time for the question of reparations. So on the strength of Cali House and ancestors like that, this is a long struggle whose time has come. Last year when I was here, I said it was my responsibility to remind you of the case of Sundiata Ogoli, a political prisoner who was in political in prison here for 49 years. I'm glad to report that after 49 years, and like the ancestors of this tradition, he never gave up. And several weeks ago, Sundiata Ogoli walked out of a New Jersey prison and he is home in the family, in the company of his family because we never, ever give up. We never give up. And of course, uh, to this tradition that I Point number three of the Black Woman Program and the Black Panther Party says not only do we want an end of the, rob of the robbery of our community by the campus, but we want an immediate return to call reparations of 40 acres and the Negro. They said two mules. They ain't said one, they said two. But whatever the new math is that makes for the need to be filled with the technological support on the question of supporting and nurturing the land, we want everything that we are due. Right. And as I open on the question of how dangerous this moment 
here. Charleston, Buffalo should remind us that we are indeed under attack. The ballot is under attack. This year is a dangerously pivotal year to, for the ballot that is 2022. And all of my sons and daughters and grandsons and daughters, my young heads here, I am pleading to you in the name of those ancestors who in our recent history fought for that ballot, fought for that Voting Rights Act. Understand that that ballot is under attack. Trump ain't over and them crazy Republicans ain't over. Your vote is as critical now as it has ever been. And under these circumstances, this is the time that we cannot afford to concede any more ground to the dangerous, backwards, reactionary, racist, and sexist right wing. We must hold the line now. Malcolm said it is a ballot or the bullet, and it's better for all of us that it is a ballot and not the bullet. So the time is now. Say the word. Say the word. spoke with Dr. King in D.C., had Dr. King speak here as well. Many of my community members were present that day at the March on Washington, and little did any of them think that we would still have to fight today. Juneteenth, we mark emancipation. We do not celebrate it yet because we have not fully completed it. Until justice has been reached until all amends have been made, until reparations have been made. The process of emancipation cannot yet be celebrated. To those who say segregation, redlining, all laws against the black community are in the past. They were my ancestors. I am different. I say this. I may not look like an immigrant, but I naturalized as an American citizen a few years ago. Thank you. And I received a whole lot of rights and privileges, and I received a lot of responsibilities. I get to now call as my own the successes of this nation, and I also have to call as my own the sins. In becoming a citizen, I am now responsible for the sins of this nation's past and present. All the more so, those who have lived here generations are still responsible. All those with power in this nation cannot yet rest with clean hands until reparations have been made. There was a massive injustice, and that injustice continues. And until we have made amends of setting those wounds straight, of building bridges of inclusion, and ensuring that it is not simply equal access, but equal treatment, equal rights, equal successes. Reparations will not have been achieved. Justice will not have been achieved. So let us establish that reparations task force now and join together for a just and equal future. Say the word! When do we want it? Now. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Our next speaker, and, and I need uh, uh, Bill to come over while the next speaker comes up. Um, Karen Thompson from the ACLU, New Jersey. Karen Thompson. Is she here? Karen Thompson. What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Good afternoon. Say the word. Say the word. Thank you. We know what we are here for. I want to 
to talk a little bit about Juneteenth, because we talk about Juneteenth just as a question of freedom, and it is about freedom and liberty, but it's also about a lie. It is about the fact that people were not told, or just people made a choice not to tell people about their freedom. So today, when we talk about reparations, when we talk about making things right, when we talk about justice, we have to talk about ending lies. And that means giving CCRVs, giving our community civilian complaint review board right on, subpoena right power right on, right. so that when police officers act up, when they kill people, when they harm citizens for no reasons, we need to know why. We need to make sure that they are not still causing harm to our community. When we talk about ending lies, that means creating police transparency and accountability so that we know that when police with records are out on our streets, we have a way to get them off of our streets and out of our community. So when we say the word, that word has to include the damage that our communities have experienced from slavery, and it also has to include what we are doing today, the way that we maintain slavery today. Because, you know, the 13th Amendment still says it's okay if you're in prison, right? So let's address all of these issues. Let's make reparations real in our courthouse, on the streets, and with our police. Thank you very much. Happy Juneteenth. And one more time, say the word. And when do we want it? All right, be well. Stay cool. All right. Where's Ryan Haygood? I saw Ryan. I saw him. Where is he? Is he late? Give him a big hand, Ryan Haygood. He'll be speaking down at City Hall. All right. Our next speaker is Charles Hall from Local 108. Is Charlie Hall here? I didn't see Charlie. All right, we go to the next speaker. I see, I saw him, I know he's here. The mayor of Montclair, New Jersey, and the president of New Jersey Education Association, Sean Spiller. Sean Spiller, where is he? What do we want? What do we want? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Spiller. I'm a high school science teacher. As I said, I proudly uh, serve as the president of the New Jersey Education Association, representing 200,000 educators throughout the state. Uh, I'm a proud mayor of the township of Montclair. And I stand here with you again this year, uh, also as a father and especially as a black man. And, and the reason we are out here again today, and the reason we are out here as many times as we need to, is yes, to celebrate how far we've come, the successes we've seen. Whether it's years years and years past, when we talk about final emancipation of our slaves and freedom, whether it's more recent victories, whether it be criminal justice, or housing, or some of the other spaces we're seeing incremental changes and steps forward. But we're also out here because we know that we need to be recommitted to the work that lies ahead. We have not, as, our, as we are on our journey towards justice and equity, freedom and peace, we have not yet accomplished our goals. We have not yet reached the America that we want to see. And we know that right here in New Jersey, we know the problems. When you look at the wealth gap between black and white families, the highest here in New Jersey. When you look at the incarceration of our youth with the school to prison pipeline, treating, treating our kids like adults when they're yet still kids. When we see the underfunding, under-resourcing of our communities of color. When nationally we see the attacks on our voting rights. When we see the fact that at every turn there's an effort to push back the victories that we've gained. We know there's work to be done. We also know what the solutions are if we're willing to put in the time and to keep fighting and keep moving forward. Here in New Jersey, yes, we're thankful for some of the things that Governor Murphy has done in terms of putting together a task force on wealth, on the wealth gap, a good start. But we call on the legislature once again, once again, to specifically form a task force to look at reparations and to look at them now. We absolutely need to keep pushing forward on that front. We need to keep pushing the legislature, yes, on voting rights, to say we need changes here still in New Jersey, same-day voter registration, and more to protect our right to vote and make sure we have free and fair elections. We need to make sure that we resource our schools and make sure our children have what they need so that they're not immediately disciplined and begin that chain, that pathway to prison as opposed to a great education. 
There are so many things that we can yet do here in New Jersey and we continue to do when we stand arm in arm to say that we need these changes now. So I will simply end by saying this. I thank you for what you do because this struggle, this journey takes time and it never happens as quickly as we want. And it never is fair in the fact that we have to demand things that are so obvious and should be a, a, a right of each and every one of us. But we still need to, we need to be out here and we need to be making that difference. And my final appeal to you is as a teacher, because when we talk about making that difference, I have to tell you that unfortunately, far too often, I see far too male teachers of color in the profession like me. And I say to each and every one of you, one of the commitments we need to have is to talk to those who are looking to make a change, people like yourself, and say if you're looking to impact the future, maybe consider becoming a teacher. And especially if you're a person of color or a male of color, think about coming into the profession because when our students, our young people, see people who look like themselves, they're way more likely to succeed. They're way more likely to stay in school, to do well, to not get into trouble. If we want to make a difference, Yes, we come out in rallies. Yes, we speak up and raise our voices to make a difference in that moment. But I have to tell you, if you want to make a difference each and every day, become a teacher. Have an impact on those next generations and make sure they are out here fighting for the things that keep improving the world long after we're gone. So thank you very much for what each and every one of you do. Let's keep this fight going. Let's keep demanding action, including reparations. And when do we want it? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Spiller. Next. 40 acres? 40 acres? 40 acres? 40 acres? 40 acres. 40 acres. It's Giovanna Castaneda here. Giovanna? Come on, Giovanna. Give her a big hand. Come on, Giovanna. Make the road New Jersey. Good afternoon, everyone. My name so sorry, everybody. Uh, my name is Giovanna, and I am the youth organizer with Make the Road New Jersey. It is an honor to be here with you all today, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, with our comrades, our comrades from the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice, but also with so many community residents and leaders to celebrate Juneteenth and to join the call for reparations now. Who is with me? Say the word. With this year's Juneteenth holiday coming just over a month after a white gunman killed 10 black people at a supermarket in Buffalo, we still see injustice and cruelty. Today, we mourn the lives lost and seek justice. We mourn the lives lost in Uvalde, Texas, and those that will be lost and the freedom of our young people will lose if more police come into our schools and our communities. On the subject of freedom, I want to talk about our schools. Schools are becoming a war zone when they must become healing places. That's right, that's right. This means robust mental health programming, restorative justice programming, more nurses, more counselors, opportunities for safe socialization, quality lunch, textbooks for everyone. Schools as healing places also means no police or school cards or metal detectors. Black and brown youth here in New Jersey have been played. We have been over-policed and under-invested in. That's right. The over-policing in black and brown communities in New Jersey has followed us into our schools without our consent or input. And who did it? Our school districts, our own state. Today, we are here to say that the school to prison pipeline will never be dismantled if we continue to put more money towards school guards and police. And after a challenging year and a half of loss and trauma during the pandemic, the time is now to invest in social emotional support and restorative justice programming instead of more guards and police. In response to the tragic shooting in Ovalde, the Attorney General of New Jersey announced that there will be an increased presence of school police in our schools. But we students and parents are here to say that we do not need more police. We need more guidance counselors and support programs. Right. Two school districts in New Jersey are already putting armed guards in their schools. Right. Who knows how many more of our schools will become militarized? More police is not the answer. 40 police of Ovalde's city budget in 2021 to 2022 went to the police. 
How much more money do we want to invest in police? The Rob Elementary School actually had an armed police officer who confused the school shooter with a teacher. Uvalde even had its own school police department separate from the city's police department, and yet none of this stopped the tragedy from happening. More police is not the solution. We need stricter gun laws all throughout the United States. But what we really need is real community safety. We need investment in student support, mental health services, and restorative justice, not more policing. Thank you, everybody. Give a big hand. What do we want? What do we want it? I want to thank the speakers for keeping their eye on Josie, because everybody got a two to three minute limit now, and everybody's been doing good. I thank you. We're going we gonna to make our goal here. Now I want to introduce the mayor of Maplewood, New Jersey, Mayor Dean Dappis. Give him a big hand. Mayor Dappis, who spoke last year. That's right. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, my brother. How we doing, everybody? Can we say the word? Let me hear you say the word. When do we want them? Actually, yesterday, as someone just said, right? What are we looking for? Justice, right? When do we want it? That's right. Listen, this is how we do it. We will keep doing this until we get what is owed for generations of inequity, of violence towards people of color, towards black people in our country, as we're about to celebrate Juneteenth over the weekend. We better call for reparations. We better rise up and connect like this to do what we can do to undo all of the harm and the wrongs that were done to pay back and to build a better, equitable community for all peoples. For our youth, our counting on us. They're looking to us to repeat reparations, justice, opportunity, equity. As local electeds, as mayors, and councilmen and councilwomen, we have a very important duty to be on the front lines of this. And all electeds out there, why aren't you here today? Why aren't you here? And you know what? When you, when you post on your social media your pictures with another famous celebrity of elected, what are you doing in your community?
level and the federal level. So, are we going to do this? Yeah. Are we going to keep doing this until we get what we want? Yeah. What is it that we want? Yeah. All right, let's march! Thank you. Give him a big hand. Zulu Sharad from the new African Black Panther Party. Give him a hand. Zulu. What do we want? <laughs> Thank you, brother. All power to the people. I said all power to the people. All power to the people. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. All power to the people. Today is a great day. Not because we are assembling here today, but because across America, oppressed people are assembling to remember their identity, to remember where they came from, to remember the blood, sweat, and tears that went into erecting or architecting this racist, white supremacist state. So that's why this is a historical day. arrived in Texas to tell a story, to tell a message, to deliver a hallelujah to the people. And when he got there and he talked to these brothers and sisters who were enslaved and told them that they were free, you know what was on their mind? Building a Freeman Bureau school. That was on their mind. You know what else was on their mind? Acquiring some land. Right. You know what else was on their mind? Acquiring that daughter or that son that was sent up south. Yeah. And so these are the moments in which we electrify and mobilize our own individual spirits to come out here to fight because they fought. They didn't stand by. They didn't petition. They didn't beg. Imagine that turn to saying, let me petition the slave state before I rebel against him. <laughs> so I want to say, brothers and sisters, the new African Black Panther Party is out here because we are a revolutionary organization. We have a community center yeah. on South Orange Jab. It's called the Hassan Shakur Community Center. We feed the people. We, we fight for those who are displaced. We fight for prisoners. We fight against pig brutality. We fight against racism. If you want to join some revolutionaries, come on South Don Jam, 309 Hassan Shakur Community Center. All power to the people. I don't want to fall down. <laughs> um, the next speaker, Raquel Roman Henry from Salvation and Social Justice. Is Raquel here? Raquel? There she is. Give her a big hand. Give her a big hand. Come on, y'all. Give her a big hand. Peace, everybody. Just a few thoughts. First, I want to thank our leaders for organizing this and for being so gracious to offer us the space. Today, we're here to commemorate 156 years ago when General Granger rolled into Galveston, Texas to announce the emancipation of black people from slavery more than two years after its declaration. Two years. For more than two years, black bodies continue to endure force exploitation, rape, and brutalization under the, until the news of emancipation reached them. Now, of course, we know that life in America for black people
people did not get any easier. We had the black codes, chain gangs, Jim Crow, war on drugs, police brutality, and the prison industrial complex. We know that for every advancement that black people in this country has made, despite the most hostile and unfavorable of conditions, America has met it with vehement rage, violence, and acrimony. We know that this malice reaches far beyond unkind words and personal attacks, but reverberates through its systems, established institutions. We know that every single time black folks begin to keep the pace, white supremacy switches the tempo. American history teaches us that at a very young age, Lincoln was this nation's best president because he freed the slaves. When in fact, the end of slavery was less about an awakening of conscience, but because he understood that the system of slavery had become untenable. He understood that any refusal to end slavery would consume the nation from inside out. See, it was less a matter of conscience and more a matter of self-preservation. All right, so it's important that we understand this collectively because any progress that we achieve in this nation is not because of the, conscious, the consciousness of white America. We have to make them understand that they cannot damn us without damning themselves. So doing what's right and what's just is the only option. We know that the truth that our forefathers learned 156 years ago is that emancipation does not equal freedom. Emancipation by itself does not equal liberation. Emancipation does not equal justice. We can't truly realize freedom and liberation without addressing, challenging, and ultimately changing the systems that are rooted in our own subjugation. We won't see justice until those same systems offer us reparations. For all that they destroyed, stole, and that's old. And reparations are not gonna come because of a stroke of conscience. So here we are more than two years after the police killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Additionally, you have Dante Wright, Andre Hill, Manuel Ellis, Rashawn Brooks, Daniel Cruz, Tatiana Jefferson, Amir Locke, Elijah McClain, Adam Toledo, Morris Gordon, Thelonious McKnight. More than two years of taking a knee, four years too damn late while declaring Black Lives Matter, and still, New Jersey legislators have failed to pass substantive police accountability legislation. More than two years, and we continue to hear that there's no appetite, no political will to move on social justice bills right now. In this New Jersey, here in a state where black people are three times more likely to face police force than white people, here in a state where black folks are incarcerated at 12.5 times the rate of white residents, here in New Jersey, where black people make up just 50% of the population but represent 43% of drug arrests, and there's no political will. Juneteenth has got to be more than a paid holiday. We're not gonna let them reduce the significance of this day by cheapening it. This day must be met with a rally cry for justice and reparations. What does reparations look like? It means investments in our communities in the way of education, housing, community-led alternative response programs, violence interruption, community-led programs that address and assess the needs of our people by our people. Investments in maternal health centers. In New Jersey, black babies are three times more likely to die than white babies before reaching age one. Three times more likely to die before age one than white babies. So in the event that they make it past age one, they're then subjugated to um, segregated schools, lack of resource schools, and then they're funneled down the school to prison pipeline. Get the foot off the neck of our babies. Desegregate our schools. End zero tolerance policies. Stop investments in youth prisons. That's what justice looks like. Stop police abuse and misconduct. Codify the Attorney General's use of force directive. Pass legislation that would require police licensing in the state of New Jersey. If we ain't talking accountability, we ain't talking justice. If we ain't talking reparations, we ain't talking justice. If we ain't talking investments in housing, education, health care, then we ain't talking justice. And you can't talk freedom without talking about liberation. So in truth, the time for talking is over. 
Well, New Jersey needs to activate into action. Say the word reparation. Blow up your legislative line. Assemble at the state house. Send emails. Let them know that this is not a request, damn it. This is a requirement. And let them know we ain't gonna stop until victory is won. Peace. What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? 40 acres. 40 acres. 40 acres. They stole us. They sold us. They owe us. They stole us. They sold us. They owe us. They stole us. They sold us. They owe us. They stole us. Take it slow. This is the slowest walk in your life. Slowest walk in your life. No rush. The day I go, crying, I want my money. <laughs>
year, and you prisons are 80% empty, yet fully staffed. What could we do in a young person's life for $600,000 a year? We need you to scan, your QR, scan this QR code to call on the state to finally close our state's racist and broken and financially wasteful youth prisons and invest in our kids. So please take this action. We will hand out a palm card if you don't have one, but we need our legislators to hear us today on this Juneteenth. Do you hear me? Can I get amen? amen. So now I'm happy to call back up Chairman Larry Hamm of the People's Organization for Progress, who the Institute is co-sponsoring this rally with, along with 50 other sponsors. Chairman Hamm. sponsoring organizations. We read off the names of all the organizations earlier, but I, I want us to give a special round of applause to the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice under the leadership of Ryan Aiken for doing everything they do today. My name is Lawrence Ham. I'm the chairman of the People's Organization for Progress. I'm a descendant. I'm a descendant of Africans that were enslaved in this country. And I want to say here today that I'm proud to be a black man that is descendant of Africans that were brought to this country against their will and fought for liberation from the shores of Africa to the shores of North America, to the plantations, through the cities, through every state in this country. I could not stand here without acknowledging all of those who fought for reparations. The demand for reparations is not a new demand. Even while black people were enslaved, there were enslaved and escaped slaves who demanded reparations, who demanded to be paid for the labor that was stolen from them. And I want to give my opinion on reparations because I know there are a lot of different thoughts of what reparations are. Let me just share what my thought is. For 400 years in the Western Hemisphere and for 245 years in what we call the United States today, Africans were brought here against their will and forced to labor. This country is one of the richest, perhaps the richest country in the world today. And that wealth was made possible by the labor of our ancestors. And when we demand reparations, what I'm demanding is, and what I think other people are demanding is, we want the wealth that was stolen from us returned to us. That's reparations. We want payment for the years of enslavement and stolen labor that was taken from us. Now there are a lot of programs that deal with the problems that enslavement has caused. And we are for housing programs, and we are for jobs programs. We are for all of those things. But in and of those things, those are not reparations. Reparations is returning the value of labor that was stolen from those who were enslaved. That is reparations. And there are a lot of people out here calling things that are reparations that is not really reparations. This country gave reparations to other groups. It gave reparations to the Jap Japanese that were incarcerated. It gave reparations for those who were enslaved in concentration camps in Europe. If they have reparations for other people, they should have reparations for African Americans in the United States of America. So what are we demanding? We're demanding now, reparations is a process. It's a step-by-step -step process. And step one 
is that in the Congress of the United States is a bill, H.R. 40. It's the reparations bill that was drafted by Congressman John Conyers in 1989. And in 2007, April 25th, 2007, John Conyers marched with us down this street to demand passage of H.R. 40. We demand that Congress pass H.R. 40, the reparations bill. And if Congress cannot pass it, then we call on President Biden to issue an executive order to implement H.R. 40. We're not going to wait another generation for this. The bill that is in the state legislature mirrors H.R. 40. It would create a reparations task force. We call on the legislature, we call on the assembly, we call on the Senate to pass the reparations task force bill, and we call on Governor Murphy to sign it into law. We're marching not only for reparations today, but we're marching for social justice. And first and foremost, in that, we want an end to police brutality. And the best antidote to police brutality is antidote, is community control of the police. We call on the legislature to pass the police review board bill with subpoena powers. Pass it now, pass it today. There's a fascist movement in this country trying to restrict democracy, trying to limit the right to vote. We call on the legislature to pass the same day voter registration bill. Pass it today. It doesn't make sense. If you're not registered, you should be able to go into the poll on election day, register and vote. There's no reason why that should not be happening today. If it can happen in other states, it can happen here in New Jersey. We want same day registration. So let me not abuse my time, but let me finish up with acknowledging some of the people. Brother Zaid mentioned earlier, Cali House, that called for reparations in the 19th century. I want to acknowledge someone that's hardly ever acknowledged but the first person that ever told me about reparations was Amiri Baraka, the father of Mayor Ross Baraka. We acknowledge Amiri Baraka. I stand here today because of Amiri Baraka. He took me to Gary, Indiana, to the National Black Political Convention. It was there in March of 1972 that I met Queen Mother Moore that campaigned for reparations for nearly 75 years. apartheid movement, he restarted the effort toward reparations. He wrote a book called The Debt. All of you should read it. I want to acknowledge Randall Robinson. I want to acknowledge N. Cobra that has fought for decades for reparations. I want to acknowledge the Institute of the Black World of the 21st century that has fought for decades of re for reparations. And let me end by saying I want to acknowledge the December 12th movement from whom I got this slogan. They stole us. They sold us. They owe us. Say it. They stole us. They sold us. They owe us. Reparations now.
consistency of always doing this, Ryan Haygood, Institute for Social Justice. I see uh, Shavonda Sumter, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter there as well. Thank you for coming, being a part of our movement here in the city of Newark and uh, in this state all together. Uh, we absolutely positively need reparations. I guess we got to start with saying the word first because some people are averse to saying the word reparations. I guess it makes them think about all of the things that they were a part of for a very long time. That they have an allergic reaction to the word reparations when they say it. So as Larry said, we, only, we not only want reparations because of free labor, we want reparations because of Jim Crow. We want reparations because of a denial of, a, of housing. We want reparations because the denial of jobs. We want reparations because we hung from trees. We want reparations for Emmett Till, right? We want reparations because our life in this country has been made miserable by a system that is designed to undermine and steal the wealth and worth from our bodies. We need reparations now. It is only the right and fair thing to do. Reparations is absolutely positively what we need. It is not just equal justice. Equal justice is democracy and everybody needs that. Everybody has a right to a job. Everybody has a right to health care. Everybody has a right to housing. Everybody has a right to education. And democracy should see that that happens. But reparations is a deliberate and intentional response to deliberate and, deliberate and intentional oppression that was done in this country by people on purpose. We want reparations because in Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896, they said we could be separate but equal at the same time. We want reparations. We want reparations for all of the mothers who had to travel in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s to flee oppression and white supremacy to get here to these cities just to meet it again. We want reparations for all of the soldiers that fought in World War II to make the world safe for democracy only to come home to not find democracy made safe for them. Because we chase fascists out of Germany only to elect them in the Oval Office here in Washington, D.C. We want reparations. We need reparations because we fought in Vietnam War to come home to be poor and living on the streets. We need reparations. As a matter of fact, if we get reparations now, maybe, maybe it will lift this country to be more democratic, to be more responsible, to be more inclusive. that we have that we refuse to deal with, to deal with racism and white supremacy that we hide over and over and over again. We need reparations. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly, you should just be happy we here. You should just be happy we still believe, we still trust, we still vote, we still participate, we still love America more than anybody else. We give our lives on this country, for this country overseas and even on the police forces in, 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 this, in this country. You should be happy that we still appreciate being under the shelter of a place that has taken us so much that our mothers and grandmothers still pray, that they go to church and still have faith, that they hope and they believe in a God, a, a God of justice, that they do this all the time in the middle of all of this. You should be happy we just didn't tear this whole place up a long time. We need you to say we need you to say it out your mouth. We need you to say reparations. We need all the legislators to say reparations. We need the Senate President. We need the Speaker of the House Speaker to say reparations. We need our governor to say reparations. We need the Attorney General to say reparations. We need all the legislators to say reparations. Then we actually need them to work towards making reparations happen. God bless.
social justice for continuing this battle with me. We've been in this fight for three years for a reparations task force. I cannot thank our partners enough. I see Reverend Anya there who was with me. Hello, thank you, thank you. I want to thank the Unitarian Church. I want to thank Salvation for Justice, the NAACP. I want to thank People for Progress, Larry Ham. You, you know, he, he, he brings it home. I want to thank our mayor for not finding a robbery to stand with us. I also have a colleague, Assemblywoman Cleo Tucker, who you will hear from shortly, who is a Newark native, who is also a part of the Legislative Black Caucus. So I want to give a call to action. And right now, we're at a pivotal moment in the state of Mercy. I'm a Democrat. I'm not ashamed of my party affiliation. In fact, I'm very proud of the progressive stances we've taken. We made sure to restore the rights to vote to persons on probation and parole, and you all stood with us to make that happen. Since 1844 and 2020, that right was restored. I want to talk to you all about helping us convince the hearts of leaders I need 41 Democratic votes in the Assembly. I need 21 Democratic votes in the Senate. I need black, brown, white folks, Asian folks to have courage, to have courage to vote for a reparations task force in the state of New Jersey where we will put the talented folks, such as the New Jersey Institute of Social Justice, folks like Larry Ham, folks like Mayor Baraka, around one table to study the harms that was caused to New Jersey, specifically of direct descendants of slavery who had loss of land, loss of wages, loss of reproductive rights, loss of educational opportunity, loss of wealth because of, and loss of housing, that's right, help me out if I'm missing something, in all those buckets, food insecurities, we keep throwing little chips at the problem. We're talking about a comprehensive task force to study the issue, put together the document, so we as a state of 9 million people, one of the most wealthiest states in the union, can come together to talk about what reforms look like for us. And then we want to share that report with the persons and our first African-American woman, Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman. We want to share this report and our first African-American Senator, Cory Booker. Because we want to send them to Washington to do the fights for the financial return for all of the harms that we've been saddled with for over 400 years. Now, Ryan's report, the Institute of Social Justice report, Andrea worked on it, some talented people. Talented is going to take over 200 years for equal stance for today in 2020. So, you know, inflation, that's that thing they talk about where gas is going up, food is going up, but wages aren't going up. We still wouldn't be on equal footing. But what I'm asking each of you to do is take back to Somerset County, Atlantic County, Burlington County, Cumberland County, all the way up Hudson County. Let, let's take it all the way up to tell every member of the legislature it is their duty, it is the will of the people to have a reparations task force now. Reparations? Now. Reparations? Now. Reparations? Now. Breeze 
as a gift from that divine and feel this breeze as a holy wind that seeks to sweep away the corrosion of white supremacy, the corrosion of white supremacy from all hearts, sweeping it away from every boardroom, every classroom, every courtroom, every squad car. We gather today, more than half a century since Reverend Martin Luther King led that march from Selma to Montgomery for voting rights after the white supremacist murders of Jimmy Lee Jackson, the Reverend James Reeb, and Viola Liuzzo. And he preached that day, how long? Not long. But now it's a half century later and we're wondering if Dr. King's sense of time isn't the same as mine, because it seems like too long to me. Andrew McChristian and Ryan Haygood, how long have you been doing this fight for reparations? How many years now? Too long, over three and a half years. And how about you, Larry Ham? Where are you, Larry? How many years have you been out on the street shouting for reparations? How many years? 72 years? <laughs> So these things that we're asking for is 
ridiculous to have a task force. A task force. We didn't say that every black person's getting ready to get, you know, an Escalade and a new BMW. We asked for a task force. A task force. So I'm going to ride or die with my sister on this and understand that if you're worried about losing an election because you're going to vote for a reparation task force, you don't deserve to be an elected official. but perhaps wasn't intended for us in the first place. But guess what? We're here now. We're in this space. And we're just simply asking for, for a better tomorrow for generations to come be, be, behind all of us. So I, leave, I lend my voice to today, Juneteenth, as we celebrate you know, the, the emancipation of slavery in this country. And we just simply say, on Juneteenth, that is a couple days, that is tomorrow. This is our time. This is our moment. Dr. King talked about the fierce urgency of now, you know, sitting in the well, you know, of the Capitol. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that moment is now. That moment is before us. And let the voices of those speakers today echo themselves to the hallowed halls of the State House in Trenton. And, and 
those individuals that don't understand our history, that don't understand our struggle, that don't understand our tomorrow. This is the education for you. This is the education for them. And we will not stop until we get that task force and we're able to lock in on tomorrow. God bless you all. Let's keep up the fight. Power to the people. Happy Juneteenth, everybody. Thank you, Chairman. I know it's hot. We only got a few more speakers left, so just hang with us for a few more minutes. You know it's hot. There's lots of water, snacks. So take advantage of that, please. We're now excited to call up Newark's very own another champion of these bills within the legislature, Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker. is go on your website of every elected official in the state of New Jersey, and I want you to text, email, and phone call every office in the state house in New Jersey and tell them we want reparations now. And if you can do that, I know it's going to be possible because when they want something done, this is what they do, and we have to follow the same protocol as everybody else. We want reparations, we want it now, and we need your help to get it through. So don't forget to look up every New Jersey elected official in the state of New Jersey. Email, text, call, and tell them we want reparations when we want it, and we want it now. Reparations now. here with the incredible people who've come up to speak today. Happy Juneteenth. I think for me, you, you may have noticed I'm Jewish. One of the central stories of Judaism is the story of slavery and freedom. Every Shabbat, every Friday, we bless the wine and we thank God for creating the earth. And we thank God for freeing us from slavery in Egypt. We have a holiday I'm sure you've heard of, Passover. It comes up every year. And the center of that holiday is we are supposed to tell ourselves that we were once slaves. Not because we have to remember how bad it was for us, but because there are people in slavery all over the world. I do not understand why this country cannot do the same thing and tell its own story of slavery. Slavery is a horrible thing to happen to people, and shoving it under the rug and forgetting about it is no way to confront our history. It's no way to be honest. It's no way to live. This goal of reparations, it's great to have a wealth, dis, uh, wealth disparity task force to talk about some of the results, but why aren't they saying the word? Why can't they say reparations? Why can't they talk? about what happened in this country for all of these years. Why can't they talk about how most of these buildings, these streets, were built by people who weren't brought here by their own choice, or who aren't working for a fair wage, who aren't living in a place where they want to be able to live because they've been restricted by slavery and all of the history that comes behind it. So we're here to say it and tell the history. We're here to say reparations. Reparations for truth. Reparations for justice. Reparations. We need to be honest about who we are in this country and how we were built. And if that's a little painful for some people who sit in their houses and sit in their fancy chairs, then tough luck. We got to do the truth here. 
right? For my people, we tell this story every year about freedom. We're telling this story, this day is the Passover for African Americans. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Day of Truth. Happy Day of Liberation. And Happy Day of Reparations. Thank you. Let's give it a gift for Rabbi. So this is our way, 50 organizations strong, of not just commemorating Juneteenth, but making the fight, the ongoing fight, freedom and real. Now comes the breeze. Say it with me. Say the word reparations. Say the word. Say the word. Say the word. So you know the story of Juneteenth. It's the story about how General Gordon Granger, he rode horseback into Galveston, Texas, and he shared with 250 enslaved Africans that they were free. But the thing is, they had actually been free two and a half years earlier. So Juneteenth is a story about the ongoing fight for freedom and liberation. And you cannot tell that story properly without saying the word reparations. This was a campaign that was launched in the office of Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin. We went to him, we shared the courageous legislators, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, Assemblyman Benji Wimberly, every black elected official in New Jersey introduced a bill that would create a New Jersey reparations task force. Task force. And in the meeting with Speaker Craig Coughlin, he shared with us that he'd be happy to champion the task force. The challenge was that it had the word reparations in it. And he said, you know, you all, Ryan, you all, I support the task force. The thing is the word reparations, it unsettles people. It makes them feel uncomfortable. And we said back to him, we're asking you for a task force. That's the concession we're making. If we're gonna make a concession, we need to be clear about what we're doing. He said, well, Ryan, you could call it anything, and I would support it. You could call it a racial equity task force. You could call it a housing task force. You could even call it a Black Lives Matter task force. But the word reparations, I just, ah, it just hurts. And we said back to him, we are in your office today, Speaker Craig Coughlin, launching a campaign, Baba Zaid, calling Say the Word Reparations. And here's the thing, bill was introduced in New Jersey. We were the first state to introduce the bill. First state. California was inspired by us. They introduced a similar bill. Three months later, they passed it, and the task force has met twice. We need to be clear to say the word reparations here in New Jersey. And the only impediment is your elected officials. So please don't leave today without using our tool, 400yearsnj.org. You can communicate with your legislator, make sure they, they support and will pass this legislation and get it to the governor's desk. Look, the truth is, we're in a state that is one of the most racially diverse states in the country. We will soon be a majority people of color state. Very soon. We can applaud that because what it speaks to is the burgeoning power and influence of people of color. But our challenge, if we get very honest, is that our state is segregated at the top. It's a state controlled by three white men. The governor, Phil Murphy, white man. The speaker of the assembly, Craig Coughlin, white man. The Senate president, Nicholas Scutari, white man. You see, the reason that the rep 
Reparations Task Force hasn't moved is because three men at the top of our legislature, the power, haven't yet moved. But the truth is, Baba Zaid, they will, because we will do what? He said we will move their behinds. I'm editing from Baba Zaid. We will move their hinds. We'll hold them accountable to pass the New Jersey Reparations Task Force, Brother Mark, to pass same-day voter registration, to finally end our shameful youth incarceration system, to close youth prisons, reinvest $609,000 we used to incarcerate kids back into communities to empower our communities. Say the word, reparations. I don't see enough of you out there with the palm cards in your hand. Text, email, and call your legislators. We need to be doing that so they hear us to know this is what is needed to make black lives really matter in New Jersey. We need same day voter registration. We need to say the word, reparations. We need to close our youth prisons and we need a CCRB legislation bill pass. And so it's my honor to introduce a partner of the Institute in this fight for all of these issues, Amy Torres, the New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice. that fight for policies to empower and protect immigrants. Now, folks might be asking, what is an immigrant's rights group doing at a Juneteenth rally? So let's be clear, there is no immigrant justice without black justice. There is no immigrant justice without black justice. To tell the truth, I struggled a little bit with preparing my remarks today. So there's there's three things I want to talk about. One is what we do and why we're here. Two is words and why they matter. And then three is where we go from here. So there is no immigrant justice without black justice. For the last two years, the Alliance has been fighting tooth and nail for excluded families who were left out of federal pandemic relief. We have been fighting to ban immigrant detention and kick the ICE jails out of New Jersey. And we have made progress in those battles, but how can we fight for economic relief if we don't yet have reparations for black New Jerseyans? How can we fight to close our jails when there are kids in prisons in New Jersey? We refuse to celebrate any one of us being free until we are all free, until we all receive justice, until we all receive reparations. That is why we're here, because there is no immigrant justice without black justice. Now, the second reason that I struggled with remarks today is that words matter a lot. And I know that together we're saying the word, what? Say the word? But there's another term that I have been struggling to say recently, and that word is white supremacy. I struggle with this word because this term used to strike fear, sorrow, terror in my heart. But time and again, when we go down to Trenton, there is only one term that describes the policies and the priorities that go through and the people who are left behind, and that term is white supremacy. White supremacy is not the Klansmen in a lawn burning a cross. It is not the Proud Boys. It is not the Radicalists hiding in a moving van and getting arrested at a Pride rally. Those people have white supremacist ideas in their heart, but they are not the ones upholding our institutions. They are not the ones responsible for policy choices that leave us behind, that strip our movements of the terms that matter. White supremacy is institutions, and unless we are actively working in, oh, we don't need the mic to know the truth, right? Unless we are acting in every single uh, public policy decision to decenter, to dismantle white supremacy, then we are upholding it. So it is just as important as we're saying reparations that we name what is behind the inaction, and it is white supremacy. Now, the last thing is 
where do we go from here? One of the demands today is same-day voter registration. Now, I've heard people say, why fight for same-day voter registration when we have things to contend with like the line, when we have really messed up endorsement practices? But let's talk a little bit about the opposition to same-day voter registration. We've heard people say that voters need to be educated. They need to be informed before making a decision on Election Day. And those sentiments remind me of the very same things that lawmakers in Georgia, lawmakers in Texas, and lawmakers in Florida say when they're passing voter suppression laws. So how can we use that same language to justify not passing expansive democracy reforms? It's not right. We deserve access to the ballot. We deserve our fair share of representation because without those, we are not going to get our fair share of resources because we're here to demand reparations. What do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? So we have three more speakers. So hang in there for just a little bit longer. Make sure to use your palm cards and make sure that the legislature hears us today. So now I'd like to invite up Reverend Dr. Prince Arekoya of the African Diaspora for Justice. Thank you so much to all the city officials and most especially the mayor of the city of Newark, Mayor Raj J. Baraka and all the state officials. We thank you for coming out. I stand here to testify before you that Africans are not poor and we are not slaves, but we are kidnapped against our will and brought to the United States of America to build this country, to work hard, to do all that we can do to better America. All we are asking for in return is reparation. What do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Thank you all for supporting the pan card in your hand. Scan the pan card. Call your elected official. Stand up for reparation because we deserve it. Not only because we want it, because we deserve it. And we are tasking right now. I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot, but I am calling our own congressman, Donna Penn Jr., to help us move this forward. Thank you so much. And the good African Diaspora for Justice. Thank you. And since he acknowledged him, please help me welcome to Congressman Donald Payne. Thank you. Thank you. Reparations. When do we want it? When do we want it? We've been waiting a long time. Yes. And to the Prince, you don't have to call me to come up. I've been at this a long time, brother. A long time. Let me just say, I want to thank a brother who has stood in the gap on this issue, has never wavered, has taken on the New Jersey state legislator, legislators, who has taken on the governor to ask him questions that need to be asked. We are in a situation where we have a great history in this country and we're just asking for our just due. We're just asking for our just due. Right. Because you look around this nation and you see the incredible wealth that has been created in this nation. If you don't have to pay the workers, everything is profit. Right. If you don't have to pay the workers, everything is profit. So this country has um, benefited for quite some time from not having to pay the workers. It's time to pay the workers. Right? You've done all right. You're sitting in your lofty mansions. Now break off a piece for the people that got you there. Right. Break off a piece for the people that got you there. Right. And so I'm, I'm just delighted. And just so you know, you know, everybody says, well, what does the Congress do? Look up 
you all of y'all got Google. Look up HR 40. HR 40. And it'll tell you what the Congress has been trying to do since John Conyers was in Congress. And we're getting there. We're closer than we've ever been. Reparations is a national question now. And we need to get it done. But I'm just here to support Ryan and the Institute and the work that they've done. Standing in the gap, on the ground, doing the hard work, the ugly work, combating issues, fighting for people, not asking for anything for themselves, but for the community. Reparations. When do we want it? Now. When do we not it? Now. When do we deserve it? Now. It's been far too long, ladies and gentlemen. And I will continue to do my job in the halls of Congress to fight for reparations on a national level. Thank you. God bless you. And let's keep the struggle moving. Thank you. God bless you. Let's give it one more time for Congressman Donald Payne. So look, I know, I know it's hot. All of a sudden, the Creator gave us some shade in which to exhale. So I just, I want to acknowledge you all, 50 plus partners for joining us. Folks came from as far as Colorado. Let's give it up for Colorado one time. Give it up for California. Say it's over California one time. So we, we're waiting on our very last speaker, who Ashanti, I'm told, is in route. And so I'm up here basically buying time, is what I'm doing. And I thank God he gave us some shade, though here comes the sun again. Here's the thing. A lot of folks are celebrating Juneteenth, commemorating. And we should do that. We should commemorate in the ways that we do. With straw, strawberry soda barbecues and celebrations. But you all know that Juneteenth is more than a commemoration. Juneteenth is us committing ourselves to the ongoing fight for freedom and liberation and reparation. So to Andrea's point, please don't leave here today without taking action to urge your legislators to pass the New Jersey Reparations Task Force to pass same-day voter registration, to build in accountability and policing, thanks Brother Yannick, through the CCRB, and to finally, finally close new, these three youth prisons that are less than a third full. They were designed to hold more than 500 young people. Today they have around 100 but they're still staffed if they're at capacity, which is why we spend $6,000 to incarcerate each young person. Please don't leave here today without taking those four actions. And while I'm talking about actions, I want to acknowledge our amazing MC, my colleague, Andrea McChristian right there. Please clap for Andrea. Andrea is part of an amazing team of some of the fiercest advocates I know. We make up the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. If you work for the Institute, please just raise, raise your hand, New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. Please shout them out. I also want to acknowledge the People's Organization for Progress. They have marches, I see Josie, marches every Monday. All power to the people, those marches are designed to organize our collective advocacy, our strength and voices to hold our elected officials accountable and to move real policies and practices to repair the cracks of structural racism in our foundation. So my colleague Ashanti is on the corner of Hill and Franklin there awaiting our final, our final speaker. His name is Corey Booker. Some he was a city council member, uh, then he was the mayor of the city of Newark. He's now a United States Senator for New Jersey. Cory Booker was actually the first lawyer to work at the Institute for Social Justice when we were founded 21 years ago, and he's on his way here. And with that vast resume, the thing I, I'm most proud of 
is that he was the first lawyer recruited by Alan Lowenstein when he founded the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. That's where he got his start. Yes, he went on to do all those things, including running for president, but before he did all that, he was a lawyer at the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. For you aspiring lawyers and racial justice advocates, Senator Cory Booker started here, and he joins us. Look, he looks fit too. Looks like he still looks like an athlete, an all-American athlete. Remember, he was a football player at Stanford too before all that. We're serious. You're closing us out. Thanks for joining us, Senator Cory Booker. Saying the word, reparate for your leadership. I'm thankful for your leadership, man. You and I have been able to work together on a lot of issues around racial justice. And if anything that Juneteenth should be about, it should be about doubling down on our commitment to continuing to try to right the wrongs from our past. And I will say that, as a great author says, the new Jim Crow is our criminal justice system. We still have too many of our young women and men incarcerated. In fact, the United States, the land of the free, has more people incarcerated. The land of the free has more people incarcerated than any other nation. One out of every three incarcerated women is in the United States of America. One out of every four incarcerated people are in the United States of America. And so today I want you to know that we are talking about the idea, the concept, the cause of reparations. I'm very honored to be the Senate sponsor of the bill on reparations in the United States Senate. And, and this to me is an urgent cause for us to begin to face our own history, to own up to what has happened, and to show accounting for it. So I know it's hot, I know folk have been out here for a long time, but I just want to say what we do matter, matters. This is an idea that we have for Juneteenth, not to be a day off, but a day on. Not to be a day where we stay home, but we stand up. Not to be a day that we are silent watching TV, but that we are making some modern day news. Because we still have a long way to go until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. We know how fragile this democracy is. We know the powers of hate and the powers of division are not far behind us right now. As we see from a January 6th, we know that what we have is not secure, that every generation must work to advance the cause of our country lest we slip backwards. And we know when it comes to voting rights, when it comes to LGBTQ rights, when it comes to women's rights, that we are seeing people who are trying to roll us backwards. So today has got to be a day that we shout freedom again. We shout it with our words, but we also show with our actions that we are committed to the cause of our country and that we are committed to freedom. So that one day we can finally say that this is a nation of liberty and justice for all, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, this country, for all of its people, are free at last. Thank you. One more time for Senator Cory Booker, please, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you again for joining us, not just to commemorate Juneteenth, but to join the ongoing fight for freedom, liberation, and reparations. One more time, say the word. One more time, say the word. Say the word. Say the word. God bless you. Thanks for coming out. Come on.